Hyperlight Drifter. You may recall first hearing about Hyperlight Drifter way back in 2013 when its Kickstarter launched and received a fair amount of press coverage in the process. Many people, including myself, took note of its striking visuals and animations, as well as its emphasis on a combat system touted as easy to pick up and hard to master. I was so excited to try this game that I literally kept it on a post-it note for three years to remind myself to keep up with development news. After three long years, that game has been released, and it's worth examining the way the game eases you into its strange and alien systems. There is no spoken dialogue, and indeed, apart from the tutorial, no real life language in the game. Everything that needs conveying to the player is done with visuals. So let's look at how your first 10 minutes with Hyperlight Drifter will teach you everything you need to know. If you wish to avoid very mild spoilers for the first 10 minutes of the game, now's your chance to bail out. Your first few minutes controlling the Drifter act as a sort of tutorial, prompting you to use your abilities in basic ways before allowing you to progress. You'll probably figure out that you move with the analog stick, but your path is immediately blocked by some plant life. You could check the controls in the menu, or just start trying each button, but either way you'll slash these plants to bits in the vein of The Legend of Zelda. This is the easiest test the game throws at you, telling you implicitly that if you can't figure out how to cut down this grass, you can't play the game. This reminds me of the first room in Cave Story, where you're forced to learn how to jump and enter doors to actually start the game. You might raise an eyebrow at the end of the first area, which is apparently a dead end. But when you step on this platform, the only thing that visibly changes is your little sprite buddy here. The icon is the equivalent of the Y or triangle button on your game controller. And as you see this pattern over and over, it starts to become second nature to watch out for it. Your next challenge comes when you reach the end of the road. If you try to keep moving, you'll see the drifter stop and peer over the edge. Keep holding the analog stick and you'll send him willingly to his doom. A little experimenting here will teach you that you can use your dash ability to cross gaps. You can dash from the second you start playing, but at that point it's not really clear what the ability is good for. But now you know that in addition to acting as a mobility tool, dashing is also required to traverse areas. You'll come across your first enemy here, which when defeated, lowers the gate barring your path. This might get you thinking that clearing out rooms of enemies can sometimes open up a new path. Your theory will be verified in just a few minutes when this process is repeated. It's here that you'll come across these strange markings on the wall. There's no jump button in Hyperlight Drifter, but you remember the only mobility skill you've been taught so far is your dash. So you try it, and are immediately rewarded. A few steps later, you'll come across a gun. As you come to the next gap in the floor, you might try to dash across again, only to discover you can't go far enough. You'll also get these handy tips down here for aiming and shooting, which you'll soon discover is exactly what you need so that you can hit this switch on the other side to make a bridge appear. Now we've got three uses for your dash and two for your gun, and the environmental clues which were completely foreign to us just a minute ago are now blatantly obvious in helping you figure out how to traverse the overworld. The next set of gaps actually contains a really important clue. The far side of each gap is marked by a white square, which is where you'd probably land after you dash across. You might just take this as decoration, but on the other side of the gaps is a dead end. If you notice the squares on the floor here forming a pattern, you might discover that you can exit to the west. Imagine trying to come up with a way to let the player know that there are certain paths that are hidden by foreground objects, and that the camera can be deceiving until you walk in the right places. Here, it's done with a little more than a few white squares, which we have been conditioned with during the gaps segment to interpret as markers of where we can go. You might find this path purely by accident, but because it's still hidden, it feels great when you find it. Finally, you'll arrive at the central hub of the game, and you're given a broad view of your goals in picture format. Since this is your first time seeing these icons, they probably won't make a lot of sense even with the charming flowchart. But everything will suddenly click when you open up your map and see the cross-shaped overworld of the game, and these are combined with the indentations of the missing triangle pieces you can make out here. The chart we just found starts to make sense now. Since it's presented to you before you know anything else about your goals, it's a little bit out of context at first and hard to understand. But exploring this hub will help you put the pieces together, and suddenly, it doesn't matter that all the NPCs speak some weird guttural language, or that the entire game is dripping with strange icons and hieroglyph-like markings. Even though this language barrier might remain, you've just managed to teach yourself what to do, where to go, and how to proceed. And the game didn't teach you anything here, you figured it out by yourself. By getting to the hub, you've proven that you know how to make use of your abilities in different scenarios. You can use the dash for movement, crossing gaps, scaling walls, or to escape enemy fire. Use the gun to attack from afar, hit distant switches, or to quickly kill a nearby enemy that's about to pounce on you. In this way, you're equipped with all the knowledge you need to progress in the game, even though you gain this knowledge through context clues and scenery. Overall, I think the first 10 minutes of Hyperlight Drifter really act as a summary of the game's expectations of the player, condensing all the exploration techniques you'll need to use into just a few screens. I'm going to take the game's tutorial here as further evidence that the show, Don't Tell Principle, is objectively the most awesome and memorable way to show the player what they can do while making them feel smart for doing it.